Let's talk about the concept of depreciation. Depreciation serves a couple of purposes. First, it allows us to see how a capital asset is used up over time. Anybody who's purchased a car knows that, you know, a car that's five years old has things that are worn out. Okay, it has depreciated, it has lost some of its value. The second useful part of depreciation is it allows us to match the cost of that capital asset to the period that it was used. If you purchase, say, a large piece of machinery for your business, you may pay a million dollars for it, but it's going to be used over the next three years, five years, ten years, perhaps twenty years. So it is not, you really shouldn't expense it all off on day one. You're going to use it over time and in accounting we like to match costs and revenues to the periods when they were incurred. So there, there are a lot of methods for depreciation. Let's take a look at two. The simplest form is what's referred to a straight line. In straight line depreciation, what we do is we, we depreciate the same amount every period. And the formula for the depreciation or the annual depreciation is the cost minus the salvage value, that is, how much do we think we'll be able to sell this for after um, we're done using it, divided by its useful life. So for example, suppose we buy a $10,000 piece of equipment Let's say it has a five-year life, and it has a $2,000 salvage value. Then plugging into this equation, we get 10,000 minus 2,000 divided by five, so that's 8,000 divided by 5 or 1600. So in this case a company is going to depreciate $1600 worth of the asset each year. That is they're going to use this to reduce their taxable income. Now let's keep a couple of things in mind. Depreciation is a non-cash expense. So by that we mean no cash actually changes hands. So when we calculate things like cash flow for the firm, we usually, we always wind up adding depreciation back in. Now, we do need to use depreciation. It does affect cash flow because it affects the amount of taxes. The more we can depreciate, the uh, lower our taxable income is, and therefore, the lower the amount of taxes that we pay. And tax is a cash expense. You actually have to write a check to the IRS. Now, another method of depreciation is MACRS, okay? Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. What is this? Well, the government allows us to expense off this capital expenditure more quickly than straight line depreciation. That is, rather than just writing off, let's say in the case of a five-year useful life, one-fifth of it each year, we can write off more of it in the early years and less of it in the, in the, um, in the later years. Why, why do they let businesses do that? They let them do that so that they can get this tax savings early. They want to encourage businesses to make capital expenditures, to expand their business, okay, good for the economy. So over here I have a, a spreadsheet where I have some of these 
depreciation schedules. Okay, kind of funny looking numbers, but these numbers come from the IRS publication on depreciation, and there are actually more years. There's a 20-year depreciation. There's there's a number of different classes. Okay, I just have three, five, seven, and ten here, and you don't just decide what year you're going to toss it into. You look up the type of um, expenditure you made, and you go to the IRS publication. It tells you whether it's a three-year useful life, five-year, seven-year, ten-year, and then you use this schedule. And you can see that in the early years, with the exception of the first year, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second, you have higher numbers in the earlier years, and then it gets smaller over time. The first year's number is, a, is smaller than the second year's number because what they assume in this schedule is this half-year convention. That is, that they're assuming that you're putting in this new asset in the middle of the year. So you get to depreciate half of it right off the bat. They have quarter-year conventions. If you look at the IRS publication, there's, a, there's obviously a lot of detail to it. But we'll use this half-year convention. So we put the asset in. If it has a three-year useful life, they're assuming you're depreciating half of it in the first year. And then you have the second year is a full year, the third year is a full year, and then the fourth year is another half year. Okay, so the five-year depreciation goes for six years. The seven-year depreciation goes for eight years because it's half a year here, half a year here. Okay, these are all full years. So let's go back to the example we had. $10,000 cost, $2,000 salvage value, and how did we calculate this? Okay, if we wanted to do it straight line and we're assuming a five-year useful life, it's going to be B2 minus B3. Okay, B2 is where the cost is, B3 is where the salvage value is, divided by in this case, five. I'm assuming a five-year useful life. So let me copy that down for five years. $1,600. How does the MACRS work? Quite similar, except we're instead of depreciating 20% every period, we're going to depreciate 20% in the first year, 32% in the second year, etc., and for an additional year. So what we're going to have here is B2, again, the cost minus the salvage value, which is in B3, times the percentage in C7. I'm going to use the five-year depreciation schedule. Now, you see it's the same for the first year, right? 20% is the same as one-fifth. But then it's going to be higher in the second year. You can see in year two, we get to depreciate more, 2560 and let me just copy this down and I need to copy it down for six years and let me just convert these to dollars and if we sum these up I want to sum from B23 to B27 I get 8,000 and if I sum up this one, I should also get 8,000. That is, we've depreciated the full amount of the asset. Now I'll just add one other thing. The reason we only depreciated $8,000 worth of assets is because it had, we assumed it had a $2,000 salvage value, that we would be able to sell it for 2,000 at the end of year five. Now, if we sell it for more than 2,000, will actually have a capital gain and we will be taxed on that. If we sell it for less than $2,000, we will have a capital loss. We'll be able to take um, a deduction off our taxes. Okay, But that's just something to keep in mind. I'm not going to cover that. But you can see that the MACRS allows, allows the firm to depreciate things faster. Okay, Kind of hard to see in the, in the five year, but if you did a 10 year, you can see instead of deducting 10% every year, 10%, and then you'd have 18, 14, 11.52. So you'd have three years where it was much higher than the 10%, and then it goes down over time. So it allows businesses to get their money back uh, much more quickly.
And so that's the point of these accelerated depreciation methods.